Now, when I was at school, I had some inspirational teachers. One of them was my drama teacher. Surprise, surprise. Now, being a teacher can be really difficult. It can also be really rewarding. Well, Raymond Chambers, who teaches here in Northamptonshire, finds his job rewarding, and now he's been rewarded for his work. In fact, he's one of the best teachers in the world. It's 7.45 in the morning and the start of another day at Brook Western Academy in Corby. With nearly 1,200 pupils and just over 200 teachers, it's a typical school like many others. But what sets it apart is that one of the teachers here is a bit of a star. In fact, he's been judged one of the best in the world. Now, what we're going to talk about today is Australia. All right, good eye, mate. What I usually teach is, is computer science, but today in, in extended tutor time, the type of things we do in class, learning about the wider world, learning about other countries, learning about British values, how, how to be a better person, what it's, what it's really like to actually make an impact on other people's lives. So we've got a barbecue. Is a Barbie. No, I'm not even going to try. Raymond Chambers, who's 30, has been teaching for nine years and he's clearly pretty good at it too. For earlier this year, he was shortlisted in a competition to find the best teacher in the world. I was just dumbfounded. I, I didn't realise it. It was like, is this happening to me? Because um, there are so many amazing staff that I work with here at this school that all work together to do amazing things. And it was just like, wow, this is happening to me. Raymond Chambers from the United Kingdom. Raymond was one of 10 teachers from around the globe shortlisted for the award. The ceremony was held in Dubai. To say the affair was lavish is a bit of an understatement. Oh, Dubai was amazing. We were treated like royalty. They put us in the top Atlantis hotel. Uh, we got to meet celebrities. The event made even the Oscars look a little tame. It had Explorer Bear Grylls jumping out of a helicopter. And to cap it all, the winner was announced by an astronaut in space. Maggie McDonald. A teacher from Canada was judged the winner. The prize, an incredible $1 million. Although Raymond might not have been crowned the world's top teacher, he came pretty close. So what is it that makes him so good? I'm a bit quirky, I'm a bit different. Um, I think if I had to highlight one of my strengths is that I build good relationships with my students. And I want to get to know them because it breaks down barriers to learning to and they want to be in your lesson. I want to make one resource that we can use when it comes up to exams that you can take home and revise from. Ray's achievements are just utterly fantastic. To, to have a teacher from Corby getting into the, the, the top ten in the world um, and attending that celebration event in uh, Dubai is just absolutely amazing. The whole community has enjoyed watching Ray go on this journey. Um, he is an inspirational teacher. The relationships he has with the students, the teaching and learning that he brings to the school is just fantastic. You're going to ask me something? Uh, yeah, what is it? What is it? Not, uh, not versatile. What's the name? Volatile. Volatile. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a former student of Mr Chambers. I'm at university now. And I think he taught me for about five years. He was really inspiring. He was always had you interacting. And he wasn't one of those teachers that left you to get it on your own. He was always helping you and always there. And it's one of the, he was one of those teachers that you remember for a long time because he was so good at his job. The most important thing that a teacher does is love and get to know their students. Now what I mean by that is if you don't actually take the time to actually get to know your students, you're not going to know what makes them tick and you're not going to know whether they're going through a hard time you're not going to be able to actually get any work from them if, you're, if you don't know what's going on underneath. You need to know your students. Each of you, all right, have got a Plickers card, all right? Now, if I ask you a question, you hold it the way up that you think is the answer to that question. So if you thought the answer was C, you'd hold it that way. He's very creative when it comes to tutor time, and it's really fun. So, so you've got to do it right at the sides. All right. So I think mine's a bit different. So I think we're like really lucky to have him as a tutor. So I'm going to come round and quickly scan these. You should notice your name changing colour on the board. 
It's amazing, it's magic. Raymond is clearly passionate about what he does. But according to the National Union of Teachers, almost a third of teachers who qualified in 2010 quit within five years. What does Raymond make of this? I think that there needs to be more of an incentive. I think that uh, people need to stop saying all the negative things around teaching and actually talk about the good things, like the impact that you have on those students and the, the relationships that you build and those students remembering, remembering your lessons and giving back to the community. Hop, back, forward, two, three, and you're gonna do that twice. So you keep going back and forward, back and forward. So try and keep your arms in while you're doing this. Raymond's love for teaching isn't just confined to the classroom. He takes part in after-school activities too. Two hops, jump, and again. His big passion is Irish dancing. And hop one, two. It's just been something I've always done since I was a little kid. So I started when I was 11, and it's an extra activity that I did outside school where I could let off steam and have fun with friends. It was good. But with teaching taking up a big chunk of his time, how does he fit everything in? Uh, shall we go on to the next dance? Uh, my wife says that I, uh, I make time. Uh, she always has a giggle and says that you always plan so much and fit things in. But I think it's good to have a, a balance of hobbies that you do because that's, that's like your mind off your teaching for a bit. It's somewhere you can kind of escape to, and that helps me, I find. Raymond's home is about a 40 minute drive from school. He gets back around six. It's a long day, but he and his wife make sure they spend time together catching up. They admit the demands of teaching can put a strain on a relationship. When we got married and started living together, it was definitely something that we had to adjust to. So for me, it was hard to start, but now it's a lot easier. So yeah, it's just finding time. Uh, I mean, I think I would add to when teachers do teacher training now, there needs to be a lot more about, a lot more training on work-life balance because they teach us how to teach, they teach us how to be um, good in the classroom, how to be an outstanding teacher. But I don't think that there's a lot of the kind of, oh, this will take time on you, this is how you deal with it, this is how you work your relationships, these are important things. And I think uh, if we had had that when I initially got into teaching, we wouldn't have had to have so many discussions, we've just had to work around it and uh, we've come out the other end, luckily, but I know there are couples that haven't. How was your day at work, actually? After a meal with his wife, it's time for one of the world's top teachers to head upstairs for an evening of marking homework. Uh, most of the time in the evenings, I can spend anywhere from two hours to four hours doing marking or planning or prepping. It depends really on my workload or what is coming up the following re week, to be honest. And, um, I'm very lucky that I've got a supportive wife who is, is kind of there and she'll come upstairs and bring me coffees and stuff if I've, if I've been uh, really, really tired. Um, but yeah, um, you kind of, uh, teaching's a lifestyle and you kind of just get into a swing of things. I want to inspire the students. The motivation that I, I, I give them, I want them to go on and think outside the box. I want them to try different things. I want them to go on and better themselves and realise that there's more to life than the little bubble where they live, that they can go on and, and do great things. And the best of luck to Ray. Well, that's